going to do my making of my bodice for my Disney Belle ball gown. This is our first mock-up, or rather I should say second mock-up. doesn't look too special at the moment, but it's very important that we go through these practice pieces. Now to achieve what I wanted, personally, this is my choice. I went back to this pattern which I've used before and I've just used it recently for the aerial blue corset dress and it was new look 6480 and I just took the front panel off this and the two sides which came with it which is this piece, this piece, this piece and this piece. So I just took panels for the front because I wanted a slightly different shape back and for that I mushed two patterns together and I used this Christine Dye dress pattern which was 4479 and I took the back sections of this particular dress because I quite like that effect and so this panel side back and back were taken off this Christine Dio pattern and after two mock-ups of attaching the pattern pieces from the Christine Dio pattern to the pattern pieces of the New Look pattern we had to sort of adjust it so these lines would meet and I wanted a slightly, slightly steeper curve on the back seam so I just curved that over a bit more a lot of trial and error, but that's what I've decided to go with. So I did particularly use one pattern, I used two patterns for this one, just to complicate things for you. Okay, furthermore, to make things even more complicated is this bodice will have four layers. That's right, four layers. First of all, I've only laid four pieces out of each section, so obviously you'll need eight pieces altogether, because the sections I've got will only make half a bodice from front to back. But basically I've got a yellow cotton for my lining. It's a, a silky cotton but you can use whatever you want. I've got my corset cotille which will be next layer. I then have a silk dupion fabric that has that slub going through it. So this is quite a nice one. I have seen ones that look not quite as nice as this with the slub that runs through on the grain line some of them don't really look that nice but this is a particularly nice one and it was lemon yellow and on the very outside I bought this gold lace off eBay unfortunately I've not ever seen this particular coloured lace again for sale so I can't really point out where to buy any more from but basically anyway that's my four layers first of all though I'm going to take my lace because this is going to be right on the outside of my bodice and I'm going to decorate it with some Swarovski crystals which is just my personal choice you don't have to decorate yours but I thought well Belle being Belle I think she should have a bit more sparkle and I do like my Swarovski crystals. Hey, it's Swarovski crystal time! My favourite part. Right, I bought these lovely Swarovski flat back crystals from eBay in colour sunflower, which matches the lace for my bodice. And they're size. SS16 which means 4mm and there's 144 of them inside the packet. Now there are literally quite a lot of places you can buy them for from uh, Hong Kong, China kind of thing from eBay and these were pretty reasonably priced uh, from Crystal Wholesale uh, price $10.99 or £6.81 in England and it was free shipping. 
So for 144 of them, that was pretty good. The next thing I've done is I've used this special hotfix tool. Now there's quite a lot of different ones you can get, but mine's called uh, Candice Professional Touch Rhinestone Applicator. I think I probably paid about £15 for it, but once you have one, it's well worth it, and you can use it to apply your crystals. Now you need hot fix ones. Uh, you can get non hot fix ones, which means you just glue them on yourself with fabric glue. But this method is a lot easier if you buy the hot fix crystals. And as you can see, it all twinkling in the light. This is, again is just my personal choice because I just love to make things sparkly. And I'll just show you quickly if I can get mum to film me just applying one or two. But pretty easy. Okay, to use your hot fix tool, place it over the crystal like that. Hold it up to allow the glue to melt and then place it lightly on your fabric just to touch it and lift it off. What I like to do is get a piece of tissue so you don't touch it with your fingers, just lightly press it down like so. Okay, I've now gone ahead and I've tacked my two layers together quite a way in from the edge. I've still left some pins in and I've put a few here and there as I was going along as I was tacking. And you'll see why in a bit that I've tacked so far in. It's basically just so I can take all my pins out. I need still need these layers, these two separate layers to be held together. And obviously you need to take your pins out before you sew it because otherwise your sewing machine needle will be going over all the pins and cause damage to your needle. Which we don't want. So anyway, this was totally my idea to do it this way. I don't know if it's in any books out there that this is an actual way of putting together things together like this, but it seemed to work on my mock-up and I was very happy with it. So, on to the next part. Oh, before I go, yes, I've done it for all the, all the eight pieces, all tacked. Okay. Okay, now I can actually start putting all my pieces together like any other normal garment that you put together, or bodice in this case. So now I can start treating it as one piece. And I'm just going to go away now and do my Blue Peter thing for those who live in the UK who know what Blue Peter is. And put them all together. And I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, I'm back. I've now whisked ahead and I've sewn all my panels together. Now you'll see why I was saying earlier in the tutorial when I was tacking the two layers together why it's important to tack your two layers right away in because you don't want them too close to where your sewing line was because you want to be able to take it all out easily after. If you'd attack too close to the edges so instead of tacking there, you tack there. You could risk bits of tacking getting stuck in the seam, which you don't want. So just a handy tip for those who want to try. The next step is once you put all your pieces together, the cotille, the inner lining, and then the outer fabric and liner, then you have to Press all the seams on all the pieces and then clip the edges where they go around the corner. Taking the cotille and the inner lining, line up all the seams and make sure that all the uh, cut seams are laid flat. Put those together and then starting from the middle panel, which is easier, Connect the cotille and the 
thinner lining together on all the seams. Checking that all the seams match at the front and at the back. Okay, putting your cotille and cotton liner together, right side to right side, to make sure the um, pieces match up perfectly. I'm now going to do channels for the boning ready to go in. And the boning that we're going to use is each channel is approximately a centimetre wide. And this is the boning I'm going to use, spring boning. This is seven millimetres wide and I usually buy this in a continuous length because it's cheaper that way. But if you're going to do that, you'll also need to buy some end caps to put onto your boning. Make sure that you order the right end caps for the width of the boning you're going to use. As well as doing all the seams, on the bodice. I'm also doing an extra piece of sewing down here because this is going to be where the um, liner is going to be put onto the outer fabric and that will be my seam. So I want to have an extra uh, sleeve to put a piece of boning into there. The next step is to have the cotille and the lining with the lining facing up and then the outer lace fabric which has been attached to the liner now that will go face down onto your lining like that and what we're going to do is sew up the side and along the top all the way to the end and then down the other side to the bottom. That will be pinned, tacked and sewn. Okay, we've now turned the bodice the right side out. Don't forget to clip into your corners before you turn it the right side out. Um, if you want to see this, please see uh, my other videos. Uh, my aerial corset um, shows us clipping the corners. Or there's probably other videos you can find that will show you. We've also put some pins in here and there just to hold it straight so it doesn't move. At the moment you notice it's still looking a little bit um, chunky and thick along the top here. Uh, to flatten it a bit we just need to give it a good press with the iron. The next stage is putting the boning in and we find that this particular website uh, is very good and we've used them a few times to get our boning venacarverdesign.co.uk You can get several different types of boning and the ones that we generally like to use are the spring boning because uh, Tris usually has to do movements in the costume that she wears and the spring boning just gives a little bit of uh, flexibility. You can buy the boning ready-made to the length that you want and they will put the end caps on for you as you can see on the screen right now but because we buy the boning by the meter because we use a lot of it we just cut it to the lengths that we need and then we have to put our own end caps on which I shall show you how to do a little bit later but this is how we will take the measurement to get the right size boning okay we're going to do one for the back seam and I'm going to measure from a centimeter from the top and then where I want the corset to finish, I'm going to take it from a centimetre just before the pin. That will be my final measurement. And what I've done here with my pins is that it's already been put on. And I've marked out with pins where the bottom of the bodice is going to be. 
we're going to have a sharp front going up to the waist and then a slow curve going to the back seam and then you have to measure each seam leaving an in a centimetre at the top and a centimetre at the bottom before you get to that pin to put the end caps on you will need two pairs of craft pliers something with a small nose and your two end caps fiddly doing it as one person but you slide the end cap onto the top like so and using one pair of pliers squeeze the end cap on sideways then with the other set of pliers we're going to crimp the top onto the top of the boning like so really put on tight now sometimes it's not quite tight enough that's okay squeeze it in squeeze it down really hard and try again just slightly loose so I'm going to put it back into the pliers and then crimp it again on the top really hard So, and now the end cap is quite solid and not moving. You have to do that to both ends on all your pieces. When, I, when you have all your boning pieces ready, lay them out in the order that they're going to be used, starting with the end one. This will then be threaded in the channel that you've made between the outer lining and the cotyl and thread every one in and push it up as far as you can to start with because we want it out of the way for when we do the sewing up of the corset at the bottom okay all well the boning now is in place and I've pushed it up as far as I can for now to get it out of the way because I'm going to run a sewing line now across the bottom where I've put the pins Having sewn through all of our layers now, following the pin, the pins, we're now going to pin, tack and sew the piping onto the bottom, leave a bit of an overlap at the end, and then using the sewing line as a guide, pin your piping along the sewing line. When you get to the centre middle, we have to do uh, a sharp turn. So cut a diagonal piece in towards the middle seam so that when you come to go up the other side that will now open and then allow you to pin tack and sew the other side okay this is showing the piping that's now being sewn onto the bottom of my bodice like so now we're going to turn up the inside of the corset so that on the outside you will just see the piping so pull in that little tail of excess that you had on the end turn it over and just pin it for now So I'm going to do that all the way along until it looks like that. Yep. Okay, we've now, I've now pinned as far as uh, the V at the bottom. And what I've done is I've undone the sewing on all the layers so that I can actually turn that over. What I'm going to do now is just cut off that little bit of excess material there like so and I'm 
going to turn this one over. Let's pin it down. And I'm going to cut off that excess material. To cut down on the bulk. And then what will happen, I'll just move this a little bit, is that I will over sew that down to neaten it up. So it'll cut down on the amount of bulk that is at the top. So now I'm just going to carry on pinning all the way to the end. Like so. And then what needs to be done is a catch stitch just to catch this material onto your inner liner to keep it out of the way. Okay, I've now catch stitched the underneath in place. So now this is all anchored down the way along. This is what it should look like on the other side. Just a quick show of it placed on our dummy. Okay, next I'm going to want to put my eyelets in for my back opening that's what I've decided to do and to do that we've had to mark where we want them to go okay so basically I don't know if you can see it we've just got some chalk and marked where we want them and you've got to make sure that they're equal same either side so that dot must match that one at the same distance for your openings and do that all the way down to the bottom. Okay, we're going for the eyelets. Uh, we're going to use four millimeters, and they're just the top hat rivets that we're going to be using. It comes with a tool for putting the eyelets in, but you can also buy. Um, this tool that will put the eyelets in, in for you and also make the small hole that you will need to put your top hat into. This comes with a range of um, different attachments for that purpose. If you're going to be doing a lot of eyelets or you make them all the time it's well worth investing in this particular tool. Probably costs about £15 but it would be well worth buying if you're going to do, be using it a lot. If not, just buy the kit that comes with uh, a plastic tool, but you'll also need to use a hammer to put your eyelets in. Right, you'll need to put into your tool uh, the size of eyelets cutter that you're going to be using and ours is four millimeters and you also need to put in the punching tool at the bottom then where you put your mark just push the two together and that creates the hole ready for your eyelets to go in okay taking your whoops taking your top hat Go from the right side of the, f of the bodice and push your top hat through from the front. Right. Next you have to change your tool. You put the plastic um, accessory in the bottom and the metal one in the top. And now we're going to push the rivet together. 
So place it over your rivet. And then you squeeze. And that forces the rivet to close over the top. And that's what it looks like on the right side. Okay, this is the finished item. Next thing to do is to get some cord and lace it up and fit it. Okay, I'm making my sash for my bodice. And I've cut out a long strip of the same satin that I used for the swags on the skirt. That nice gold satin. Uh, the strip measures approximately 1 meter 73 long. And I said about 26 centimeters wide. What I've decided to do is to do a turn over the top and do like a gap across the top and the bottom and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, this is our piece of material cut to make our sash and what we're doing at the moment is turning over the top and the bottom by a small amount and then turning it again and that is going to create a channel for the elastic to go in top and bottom. The elastic that we're going to thread through is what is going to hold the sash onto the top of the arms on the dress. Okay, after you've pinned down your channel, it's advisable to run a tacking stitch all the way along to hold it whilst you're sewing down. Do that right to the end of the strip. Okay, this is a quick mock up on some scrap, but what I'm trying to achieve on my swag is something that looks like this. And on the back, basically, I just take a bit of fabric and pinch it, and I'll be sewing along there eventually. But I'm hoping for sort of that sort of effect as it goes along. We'll try and explain how we'll do that now. Okay, next we're going to measure the width again. Now we've turned the edges of our fabric over and it now measures 22 and I want roughly two equal lines to make my one, two, three, three sections. So we have to take the measurement and then divide three into that which works out of mine at roughly, at roughly 7.3 centimetres. So we're just marking two lines there with the chalk. And we'll have to do that all the way down the strip so that our lines are equal going all the way the length width. Okay, where I've put the tailor's chalk mark, I'm now pinching that so we have a ridge right on the top and I'm just putting a pin in there for now and I'm going to do that all the way down following the mark and also on this one Taylor's chalk is on the top edge so I'll just put some pins in to mark that so it doesn't move and I'm going to do that again all the way down the material Okay, I've now machine sewed across the top and the bottom and I've also done this other bit here along there and the other bit as well so now it looks like this on the other side Next thing I'm going to do is get my elastic, put a safety pin at the end of it and start threading it through my channels at the top and bottom.
Next I'm going to be elasticating my two channels in the middle. As you can see I've done this one earlier, but this time I'll be using some shearing elastic which is a bit thinner than the elastic used on the side there. And I'll just be threading that through these channels as well. Okay, we've now threaded all our elastic through and we just put a pin in place to hold the elastic there. Next thing I need to do is to try on my bodice and try this around me. And have mum pull it tight at the back for me and then just tie off the ends of the elastic with a knot. This is pretty much what it looks like. It's turned out a little bit differently to what I had in mind, but I think that looks extremely nice. An elastic just helps to hold it up. Okay, pull through the elastic as uh, tight as you need it to be. Try it onto your shoulders first, make sure it's not too tight or too loose. And when you have the right amount of elastic, over sew quite a few stitches to tie it off and then you'll be able to cut that section. Where you have your shearing elastic, I use the end tails of the sewing that we made the channels out of and just sew several knots so they wouldn't come undone. Gather all the ends together on the uh, sash and turn over to neaten it and then sew the end of the sash just before your eyelets and secure that in place. The middle has now been gathered together and sewn onto the bodice to keep it in place and I've also done a catch stitch at a few places along the bodice to stop the uh, shoulder piece from moving just where I'm pointing to and there's another one just along the top so that when you're wearing it it doesn't keep uh, falling off the shoulders We found this um, gold hairpiece in an accessory shop. I think you might be able to get one from Claire's or a similar sort of shop. But it should have been, um, you should be able to clip it into your hair, the clip on the back. And we thought it would make an ideal centerpiece to clip onto the middle of the bodice, like so. Okay, this is now the completed bodice. Not only have I got the flower on the front, but I've also made some little ribbons to go on the side. In exactly the same way I did the ribbons on the skirt, but on a smaller scale. And this is the back. We just lace it up with the cord and we pop the cord in the top then this bow actually comes off and then covers that bit at the top 